Why, hi there, and uh, welcome to another playthrough of Commands and Colors Ancients and our second Punic War campaign. And today we have reached, uh, well, this is a dramatic turning point of the second Punic War. I think you could really say that. Uh, so we are in the year 207 BC, and we are seeing Hasdrubal Barca for the last time, because he is actually killed uh, in this battle, or he was killed in this battle. And, well, where are we then? Well, Metarus is uh, a river uh, in Italy, in uh, uh, on the eastern coast. If you think about Rome the city and draw a straight line up northeast, you will hit the, uh, the river Metarus. So, Hasdrubal is suddenly, if you remember the, first, the last battle where he featured with uh, Hasdrubal Barca, it was Baikula uh, the year before this. Then he was back in Hispania, if you remember. He lost that battle, he had to retreat, he uh, got some fresh troops from his, uh, from his brother, and then he went on north towards uh, today's France, or Gaul at that time. Uh, so he did, did cross the Pyrenees, first of all, as uh, Hannibal did, but Hasdrubal did uh, cross them uh, way more to the west uh, of that mountain range. So he entered Gaul in a more western approach and then uh, waded through Gaul. And basically he did the same thing as Hannibal ten years before or nine years before, or something like that. Or actually maybe even longer than that. This is it, That was 218, if I remember correctly. So, and I mean, Hasdrubal, if you look here at his army composition really quick, you see he has elephants, and I think he has about 10 elephants, actually, at least featured in this battle. So, uh, he did pretty much the same thing as his brother uh, Hannibal a decade before, right? So, uh, uh, but, of course, well, two things did his uh, um, march through uh, the Alps a bit easier than, than Hannibal had. Um, first of all, the Gauls around the, uh, the Alps at that point was more friendly and had respect for Carthage. So he, he, didn't ha he didn't face the hostility that Hannibal did. Secondly, uh, I mean, he when, when Hannibal crossed uh, the Alps, he had to clear the way at some points, he had to build constructions, you know, to support for moving the elephants and, and so forth. So, many of these were still in place when Hasdrubal uh, reached the Alps. So he had a bit of an easier task to, to go through the mountains, but still, um, I think this was a big effort uh, to do it, um, getting the elephants over again, because there are such uh, um, narrow mountain passes there. Uh, I have seen some videos and photos from, from that mountain range where they assume uh, at least where Hannibal went. Uh, I know there are a few different roads that he could have taken, but a b more likely one, because they have quite recently, okay, I'm I'm drifting away from the subject here, I feel that now, but I just had to mention it, right? Um, quite recently uh, they have actually found some evidence for where the, uh, Hannibal went through because they have been taking some samples from the earth and you know reaching a layer where they, where they think is about 218 when Hannibal was here and they have found a lot of you know um, uh, what it's called you know oh, basically horse poo and <laughs> stuff like that uh, and a big amount of that so it must have been many many animals who went, went through those points uh, during that time so that indicates it could be Hannibal. Anyway, that's another story, of course. Uh, we have already seen that, that we've already gone through those things. But Hasdrubal, uh, I'm not sure if he went through the exact same path, but it's also, actually it said that he, he had some benefits uh, from the constructions that uh, Hannibal left in the, in the mountains. Anyway, he went down. During the trip, he managed to, like Hannibal actually, get some nice reinforcements. He got 
loads of Ligurians into his army. I think actually most of uh, his army at this point was Ligurians. But he also managed to get uh, a lot of Gauls. And of course with him he had uh, a lot of Hispanic troops, um, Africans, um, yeah, so Celt Iberians and, and, and people like that. So as usual and when when the Punic army is uh, put together, it has uh, people from all around the Mediterranean almost. So he had something like 30,000 men uh, when he went southwards towards, uh, uh, well, his goal was to, you know, uh, join with his brother Hannibal and they could put together their armies and at last bring Rome to his to its knees and actually it's I also read somewhere that he had also some siege equipment with him so that could probably indicate that they were seriously thinking of attacking Rome itself maybe um, so on the Roman side we have two consuls uh, Nero and Livius Livius is the one who was sent up to because the Romans knew that Hasdrubal was coming eventually, right? So, uh, they had to send some forces against uh, against him, and, they, and Livius was the consul who led the consular army checking Hasdrubal, but neither of these guys, they were pretty evenly matched. Uh, so, no one of them initially did any, any, any big efforts for a big pitched battle, even though there were some battles uh, happening between the Romans and Carthaginians up north. Uh, Nero, he's, uh, he was the guy actually a long way to the south, I think it was hundreds of kilometers. He was, uh, you know, close to Hannibal and his army and basically the same situation were there because uh, Hannibal didn't have the force to, to attack Nero. His, his army was pretty much too, too strong for that. And remember, we, I mean, this is the year 207, so this is you know, uh, ten, 10 years since uh, the big uh, Hannibal successes, you know, you remember those battles uh, culminating in Cannae. But um, anyway, so they were pretty much checking each other there. And, but there was some, you know, panic in the, in the Roman camp here because, okay, then the new Hasdrubal was coming. He, Hasdrubal was sending, you know, uh, messengers southwards to uh, to to Hannibal, uh, where he was to uh, suggest a place where the armies would uh, come together and, and and bring up the numbers to a big uh, well, melt them together to a big army basically. Now, luckily for the Romans, uh, they got they got uh, they captured the, the messengers that Hasdrubal had sent, and Nero got. Uh, um, the information from those guys, so he knew what Hasdrubal has suggested to um, to Hannibal. So the Romans had to do something to prevent this from happening, of course. So, well, now as we're seeing more and more in the in the late later part of the war, if you could call it that, because I mean we are seeing the the, the Carthaginian uh, warlock turning well bad, and the Romans are. They are doing pretty cunning things, actually, and that's that's cool. Like Scipio is doing in 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 Spain, and uh, now we are seeing another thing where they actually trick Hannibal, uh, kind of, because Nero, with his army facing Hannibal, he left. I don't know how much troops he left, but he left a a bunch of troops against Hannibal. But they tried to, you know. Uh, make sure that Hannibal didn't suspect anything that the other guys were marching away because Nero took a big a bunch of his army. I think it was about, um, not really sure, but somewhere between seven or ten thousand men, and marched nor north uh, towards uh, uh, Livius. And um, and he he brought with him uh, more most importantly the, the horse. So they wanted, you know, be superior in horse in the, in the upcoming battle that they knew were coming. Uh, so he went away. The other guys left uh, against Hannibal, 
try to make sure that the whole army was still there, making noise, be lots of you know camps and stuff like that. So Hannibal didn't suspect anything, and they succeeded with that. And Nero did a tremendous uh, force march up north to uh, join Livius army. Uh, so uh, up north again, Hasdrubal knew that they were, you know, Livius and Hasdrubal was pretty much equal in, in, in strength. And Hasdrubal was actually eager to, or, or he could he could see a, a battle coming. So he had been, you know, deploying for battle, uh, trying to, you know, getting the Ro Romans to, to do the battle. Now, one night, uh, Hasdrubal was informed and he, he, and he heard that there was a trumpet sounding in the Roman camp. And this was during the night time, right? And he knew that that meant one thing, that some important person uh, had arrived into Livius' camp. And suspecting that it was another consul, because he could, you know, figure that out from the, from the trumpeting, he thought, okay, here's another consular army coming, and they have now joined forces, so I don't have any chance anymore to, to do this fight. So, he pretty much started to pack up, uh, and I think he also did that during the night time, uh, started to, you know, retreat from this uh, area to get away from the Romans. And he had some, uh, you know, pilots or scouts who, who were working for, for him, uh, but they did betray him during that, that retreat, for some reason, and uh, so Hasdrubal got lost with his army. I mean, his plan was to get over the river uh, Metarus to the uh, northern sides again, you know, to get away from, from the Romans, because this was also a time when the, when the, when the river Metarus was swelling, so it was difficult to cross, so you needed to do that in a certain places. And the, and the scouts to, who should uh, uh, bring the Carthaginian army to those places, they betrayed him and, you know, just disappeared. So Hasdrubal was lost, so uh, when it started to, you know, when, 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 when the daybreak came, they still were on the wrong side of the river, they didn't find the places where to cross, and they were pretty much trapped. The Romans, of course, noticed this, they saw that Hasdrubal wanted to get away, uh, so they started to follow him, and, and the cavalry started to harass them uh, in their retreat. So Hasdrubal had no other uh, option than to deploy his army into a battle, because he couldn't get away, and it was, you know, difficult to try to retreat, uh, and you know, when you really don't know where to retreat, while having Romans at your heels. So, uh, he deployed for battle, and Nero and Livius was of, of course happy about this, he also deployed for battle because now they had a good chance to cr crush Hasdrubal, uh, which was the original plan why Nero did this uh, fantastic force march with his, well, much elite part of, it, of, the, of, the, of his uh, consular army. So Hasdrubal deployed his troops, uh, putting his cavalry to his right, mostly, because that was where the Romans had their uh, big, big uh, bunch of their the cavalry, and for once the Romans were stronger in cavalry. Usually, it's the other way around, uh, and that made Hasdrubal a bit nervous, I believe. And then he also put uh, his uh, Hispanic veterans and Africans on the right hand side. The center was mostly uh, Ligurians. Uh, we have some elephants back here, but. Uh, I think I read that he actually deployed the elephants up front, and they, uh, well, they did some, some, some. Uh, they had some effect in this battle. And and to his uh, left, he put the Gauls. Uh, it also said that the Gauls were drunk and not that fit for battle during this day. So, <laughs> so he deployed them in a safe place, basically. Uh, yeah, there was some difficult terrain. Uh, and he placed them behind that on the hills, on the bluffs here, and then uh, making sure that they had the, the safest place because they could really, he couldn't really rely on them. And I think also the goals were deserting at an increased rate during this time as well. So they were just getting away from the lines. Uh, so both the day sense where this were going. So this was not a happy time for Hasdrubal. 
uh, the Romans were, you know, they had a pretty classic uh, uh, army. So they have, so if Hasdrubal had about 30,000 men, if we believe some of the sources, uh, the Romans had probably 40,000 or something like that, uh, about 10,000 more. And the battle started with a, with a cavalry clashing, pretty even fight, and I think at this point actually the elephants uh, charged into the Roman horse, uh, bringing them in a big confusion. Uh, so there were no real, uh, you know, um, decisive thing happening here. Uh, after that, the the center, the infantry started to march forward. A bitter fight between the between the Ligurians uh, started here. Uh, on the Roman right, uh, actually Porcius, who is a praetor, he was placed on the right hand side opposing the the Gauls. Uh, but he he saw pretty much that the terrain was too harsh. It was too impossible for them to do anything here. So. At a later stage, he actually took some of his troops and marched behind the Roman lines and appeared somewhere, uh, somewhere here when the battle was raging, and doing another assault on the left flank. That, well, they come in in such good place, so they started to flank the uh, the Hispanic troops here. So they started to retreat. This meant that the Ligurians now also had troops on their flanks. So they also started to retreat off the off the board, and or off, off the field, uh, and the Gauls were still standing here. But now the Romans started to march towards the uh, Gauls, and also they had the chance to attack the Gauls on the on the on the flank, and that became too much for the Gauls eventually, who also broke a red. And then, well, we had the whole Carthaginian army in a in a in a route or at least a full retreat. At this point, Hasdrubal saw where this work going uh, because he tried to rally people here and there and sometimes he, he managed to do that and the battle was renewed. But, I mean, as soon as he went away to another place, I mean, those guys started to, to weaver and, and uh, were pretty much, uh, you know, retreating off the, of the battle. So Hasdrubal knew, okay, this is a lost cause. So he took some of his uh, uh, pretty much bodyguards, um, I think it was Hispanic veterans, and on his horse he charged the Roman lines uh, in a desperate last attack to, you know, well, to, to regain his honor, basically. So he was cut down and killed, and this was, of course, severe blow to the whole Roman army, or Carthaginian army, sorry, who started to uh, rout from the battle. So they, and they were pretty much dispersed all over the places because they had no general. And also they had taken so many losses and they have, and also thousands were taken prisoners here. I think it was, I'm not really sure, 5,000 or 6,000, somewhere there, I believe, uh, prisoners taken also from the Carthaginians. Uh, and the Romans, they found the body of Hasdrubal and Nero took his head off and brought it with him when he marched south again. And as the famous tale tells, uh, he showed the head to Hannibal, who then realized that he missed the opportunity to meet with Hasdrubal. Because it's also said that Hannibal didn't really know that Hasdrubal was coming, because none of the messengers were uh, reaching him. Uh, and that was also one thing why Hasdrubal had to retreat when he saw that there were two armies here. He wanted to retreat back north and getting first the messages over to Hannibal so he would knew, know that he was here, right? But he never did manage to do that. So Hannibal, of course, probably cursed that. And by that, this was a real turning point because now Hannibal realized, okay, I will not get any more reinforcements. Uh, and I, I don't have the strength to attack the Roman armies, so that's what I mean. It was a pretty, pretty big turning point in the Italian campaign because now he had to retreat uh, more southwards to Brutium, but he will linger on there for a few years more. But it was a lost cause for the Carthaginians in Italy at this point. Uh, uh, 
I think though that there was an um, Carthaginian general uh, name of him he, he had one of these common names I think it was maybe uh, Hamilcar or Himilco, something like that <laughs> a typical general's name for or noble name of the Carthaginians who actually managed to uh, you know, organized the troops up in Gaul and had had some resistance going up there uh, for a long time, at least I think uh, it, I read the year 200 BC somewhere, so um, so basically there were, there were some Cartaginian, uh, kind of Cartaginian resistance still going on up north in northern Italy after this battle, but Otherwise, this army was pretty much dispersed and no threat anymore to the Romans. So that's the story behind the battle. And uh, let's check the war council. Then we have uh, the Carthaginian army, leader Hasdrubal, four command cards. Nero is the leader of the Roman army with six command cards, meaning we will see the Romans play this game with two cards in slot A and D, the whole battle. And they will move first and we will fight till one side gets seven banners. Special rules. Uh, the two streams are affordable. So this is not the Metaurus, but these are some streams, probably a bit swollen as well, but still you can you can afford these, these uh, 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 streams here. Okay, that's it. So let's take a look at the board then and what we have here. So let's start this time with the Carthaginians. So here we have Hasdrubal on the right hand flank with two heavy infantry over there. That's probably both uh, Hispanic troops and uh, African troops. We have two light cavalry, I bet those are Numidians. And then we have slingers. We actually have three slinger units uh, uh, in this battle. And probably that's Balearic slingers that uh, he brought with him. Uh, then in the center we have the elephants we talked about. I think, if I'm not um, mistaken, it's ten of those uh, elephants. And I can also mention that six of those elephants were killed in this battle because when uh, you know when, when the Romans did that last big attack on the left-hand flank, those elephants start to panic. So they started to rampage and killing both Carthaginian and Romans alike. So they just created a mess here. So six of those guys, I believe they're, uh, you know, they're, um, what is called, they're riders, or they're, uh, those who control the elephants, they kill those uh, by themselves. So it was not the Romans who killed them. And the other four, uh, I think the Romans uh, uh, took, actually. They captured four of the elephants. And then in the center we have three medium heavy infantry, that's the Ligurians. And as I said, we have some Balearic slingers here as well. And here we have the Gaul, Gauls on the left hand flank, two warrior units, and one medium heavy cavalry. That's it. Uh, so again, as we have seen also in in Spain or Hispania, uh, the Catalinians really are fighting uphill because they don't have that many leaders. Always this one leader, right? So here's Hasdrubal, all alone, all alone. Uh, against three Roman leaders. Uh, so, for the Romans then, start on the left, we have that Roman and Italian cavalry concentrated here. So they have a more cavalry than, than the Carthaginians have. They have. In the first line, some medium heavies, we have yeah, some Hastati there, we have three units of Velites light infantry, in the second line, we see more medium heavy infantry, four of them actually back here, uh, Principes. And then we have actually three units of heavy infantry, so we have a lot of Triarii here. Uh, there's Nero, by the way, uh, there's Livius, and there is uh, uh, Porcius the Praetor who, who marched from that flank over here to aid in this battle. Maybe some of these guys also have. Uh, are from Porcius uh, troops actually. And on the right hand side, you know, Porcius led, uh, left some of the Hovis troops over here just to keep those guys in check. And eventually, when 
the Romans were starting to attack from the flank, these guys also attacked from, from the front, so the poor Gauls had to fight at two fronts at least. Maybe there were some guys from the back as well. Uh, uh, it was really a tough situation for the Gauls there, so this, they broke eventually. So that's the army composition. Um, Terrain-wise, we have the streams, we have some uh, bluffs or hill hexes uh, along the streams. We also have pretty rough terrain over on the Roman left-hand flank here. We have four uh, hill hexes and we also have um, four uh, hexes of rough terrain and that's something we don't see that often so we can just have a quick uh, recap how those works. So for movement there are no impediment for um, foot units, they can just move as usual and they can battle as uh, as usual when they enter those guys or those hexes. Cavalry needs to stop or mounted units uh, need to stop when they enter such a hex and they cannot battle the turn they enter that hex. Uh, battling in and out uh, is a maximum of two battle dice uh, plus any card effects. So that's basically it I believe. Um, yeah, the terrain I think we know uh, know of at this point. So by that I think we are ready to start the battle. Oh, maybe a word or two about the battle plans. Uh, for the Romans, um, on this flank I would just stay put, I believe. I might even put up those guys into a bit more safer terrain. Uh, but the whole this bunch, they would just start steamroll into the Carthaginian lines and you know we just want to grind those guys down. We know we have some dangerous stuff there, two heavy infantry, we have the elephants. But still, that's that's the way we do it as the Romans, right? We go in and we just uh, you know get everything that stands in front of us. I might even do a cavalry I mean the terrain for the cavalry is not ideal over here of course with this broken terrain which stops movement immediately for a for the horse but still hmm, I might even attack because we can get for instance that one in one go and maybe even harm some of the heavies even if we know that we will get hit back hard and maybe be killed even, even with the cavalry we can do some harm before the big clash of the infantry and it might be worth it actually. Let's see, it depends on the cards of course. The Catagini as well. Uh, I think I think we have pretty strong troops over there that would probably not see any battle if we don't do anything. So if I get a chance, if I mean of course we need to pay attention to whether things will happen, but if we get any chance, I might start moving these guys towards the center, forward center perhaps to uh, have a chance for the Gauls to engage in the battle. They are precious troops and uh, good good quality troops there. Uh, for here I think I might uh, move the Ligurians towards the Carthaginian right to get a solid line here in case we get some good line commands. Of course it's a nice lane here for the elephants to charge out but on the other hand it's also a lane for the Roman cavalry to get behind our backs and you know hinder us from uh, retreating and stuff, so we'll see. Um, I think I want to initially close the gap. I mean, we can later open up so the elephants can charge through if needed. That's what I think. And as as long as we can, we want to skirmish with the Cadginians. We have good slingers, we are already in range. So let's see. But anyway, uh, the Romans start the game, so we're gonna see what cards they actually have in the slots here. So we have an uh, inspired right leadership. There's no leader so on the right hand side. We have two units center, okay. And then we have a double time. Oh my, a double time indeed. Well. So the right leadership, uh, that could give me one unit of my choice. Um, yeah, interesting, interesting things we could do here, but let's first of all roll what card the Romans can play. 
Actually, that is an A or B, so it's the card that we have up now. So, uh, the double time, well, we could get two units in um, to attack already now. Against the Slingers. Those guys can't evade, those will evade. Uh, maybe we should wait until we get more, we can use that more efficiently. So that will be the Inspired Right Leadership or the two units center. We could, of course, start preparing for a uh, double time in the center by moving up two of the troops, but we have those light guys actually in our way there. It sucks. Um, Actually, this is not an ideal opening for the Romans. Uh, opening hand. Um, maybe move up to Velites and start skirmishing. Or we, you know, use this card already so we get rid of it and just maybe move up those guys up there, you know. That's a more defensive plan. A more offensive would be at least to start using our Velites. Let's do this. Let's let's take the f let let let's <laughs> fate decide already on turn one what the Romans would do. So I will roll for it. So one to three, I will use this card and put those uh, auxilia into position on the right hand flank. Four to six, we do the Velites uh, attack. That's a four, so it's a valid taste. So two units center. And let's see. Let's see if we can scare those guys away. So I'm gonna move up. I'm gonna order those two, and they will move up like that and like that. And then we start. We start with this guy, one die against a slinger. And that's it. Good. Skirmishing. First blood already. Second one, same target. Miss. Okay. So we're starting to probe a bit here in the center. And testing the morale of the, of the slingers. And some of them got nervous and got away uh, by seeing the javelins coming in. So we're going to replace the card. And then we go to the Catechinians. Yeah, let's check the cards. Medium troops, well, we have quite a few of those. Then we have a Spartacus card. Wow, starting to look good in the Catechinian hand at least. Let's see what they're gonna play. That's um, uh, lowest order count or the Spartacus card basically. So I need to play one of these and I think the Spartacus card is a bit too early to be honest so we're gonna go with the medium troops and that would be four four of them because the Kachina had a hand of four so in that case um, let's do this I'm gonna Go with the plan I said. I'm gonna bring those lines together. So I will do one, two, three, and also one of the warriors. So nothing exciting happening here. These guys are just closing in the, the gap here, waiting for a nice line command eventually. Or, you know, the good thing with the Hasdrubal position in this battle, uh, if you uh, compare it to, for instance, uh, Baikula, or if you remember Der Tosa and battles like that, um, he was, you know, way out somewhere in the periphery of the battle. But now he's pretty much in the in the where it's gonna happen, I think. So, and he's attached to a good unit from the start. So, um, at least that's something for the Cartaginian general here. Then we have these guys. They can only move one because they will not charge, and they will just, you know, start moving towards the center a bit, something like that. Oh, replace that card and then go to the Romans again. And now we got a D or E, so that's some cards we don't see yet. So we have a leadership any section, okay. We have a nice line command coming up 
and we also have a mounted charge. Oh my, now it's starting to starting to happen things here. I mean, the mounted charge, I could attack with two units, you know, and it's for a whole turn, so I will also benefit of that from, oh my. Should I used already, or should I go with a line command and start mo moving forward with the whole infantry line here? I mean, there's a, there's tempting things to do here. Uh, also, the leadership in this section could be, you know, let's say we uh, we took Nero, and then three more units, we could take the cavalry. So we move up the cavalry first, we do the attack against the slingers, then we move up these guys, uh, I mean Nero himself, and then the next turn, if we get the chance, we could do the mounted charge, if we just survived that turn. Uh, but we could get, you know, all the cavalry into position to do the charge next turn. So that's actually also an option. option. Or we do the line command, we can do a good bunch of javelin throwing, we move up the whole line and we could be ready for a double time. So, you know, we have two really nice things here and Heck, I cannot decide when these things happen, so I need to roll for it again. So, one to three, it will be the cavalry plan, basically. So then I will actually play the leadership any section and go for Nero, attack with the cavalry, and put the one that cannot reach any enemy in a good position for a later charge. If we roll four to six, I will more go for the infantry thing. So I will do a line command, moving up the whole bunch of the army, and then wait for the double time next time. Let's see. That's a once, we go for the cavalry option, so... And that's a good historical thing, because that's how the action started in, in, in this battle, historically. Nero sent forth his cavalry first. That's what we're gonna do as well. So we're gonna play the leadership in this section. And that will be Nero, plus all the cavalry. And now we're gonna charge. So these guys go one, two, three. These guys go one, two, three. And the last one who is not lucky enough to reach anything, he will go actually up on the broken terrain here. So he's now ready, you know, next turn to charge at some nice place. Okay, but we have some attacks coming up here. And we will start with the one who only have one... Oh, sorry, we're gonna do one more movement. Uh, these guys will move up with the Triarii, Nero himself, taking the flank here. Uh, so now we're gonna attack with that cavalry against, by the way, no, I'm gonna do another thing, sorry, I will not order that guy, I will actually only order Nero himself, because he will now take command of the cavalry, he will, he will ride with these guys, that's what I'm gonna do, so he's gonna actually detach from the Triarii, leaving those there, and attack, so, that gives me three dice, and I also hit with the leader symbols, that's of course why I wanted to bring him along. Uh, and those guys cannot evade, that's good for us. Three dice, and three hits, thanks to Nero being there. So these guys are really decimated now, but still they're gonna hit back. Two dice, and they missed, they don't hit with swords, they are light troops. Then we got the other cavalry, they will attack the decimated um, unit there. They also are adjacent to a leader, so they will hit with leader symbols. We got two hits in, two green. So these guys are eliminated, the Romans get their first uh, victory banner. And I can go in, I can go one more. Which I will do. I will go here and attack that uh, next guy there. I'm not adjacent to leader anymore, but anyway, I think I'm gonna get a few good hits there as well. Well, at least one and then one flag, but they can actually ignore that because they are supported. But they take one hit though. So we are pretty much sweeping through the slingers here, uh, who panic and run away from the battle already. But they're gonna battle back, two dice, and this time they actually hit. So one hit on the cavalry. They got to be tired and tangled up there, and uh, who knows? Perhaps they're coming in some javelins from the main line here also. 
Well, that was a cool turn and, you know, now we're pretty much ready for the cavalry charge, which I hope we can play next time. So let's replace that card and then we go over to the Cataginians. So, what can they do then? It's a D or E. Dark in the sky. Or two unit center. Dark in the sky. Well, we could fire with those guys against Nero's cavalry. We could fire with those slingers against uh, any of these two. Oh, sorry, there we are. Any of these two Velite units. These guys cannot, unfortunately, not battle because they are adjacent to an enemy. Um, or to unit center. Which could give us the chance to scare away that horse. Attacking with those guys. We could even do a cavalry, uh, sorry, an elephant charge there. If we move away that medium heavies, but maybe we don't want to do that. Um, let's see then. Hmm. I'm gonna be fair against the Romans. I'm gonna roll for the Cardinians as well. So one, two, three, we will dock in the sky. Four, five, six, we will attack that cavalry with a Mediums. I know they're gonna evade, but still, we're gonna scare those guys off at least. So it's a uh, five. That we means we will play the two unit center. We're not dark in the sky yet. So it's those guys, and let's take a slinger unit as well. Those guys. Um, yeah. And first of all, I want to attack here. There's no movement. That's four dice. That cavalry will try to evade, so we're gonna roll those four dice and any blue will hit. And we got three of them. We actually got the Roman cavalry entangled here and killed. So we got the Cartaginian first banner as well. Good for us. That's the Cartaginian player. And then we have these guys, they will pepper those uh, velites with stones. Two dice. And we got one hit. So also the skirmishing is uh, bringing some casualties here, actually. It's nice to see. Okay. A decent turn by the Cardinians for sure. So now let's see if they can pull through the mounted charge. We have still two full strength units who could do it with the Romans. Another D or E. So that's exactly what we get. So we're going to do the mounted charge now. So these guys will attack, and now it's a question, who will be the target? Or targets? Uh, I think we're gonna try to eliminate that guy, and then crush into the Ligurians. I think that's our main battle plan. Uh, the bad thing is these guys cannot really reach the Ligurian lines. That sucks a bit, actually. That means we almost need to attack the heavies, which is extremely dangerous to do. But you know, we get four dice. And I want the leader with me, so... Yeah, I'm gonna do it. So these guys, one, two, are right there. These guys, one, two, three. They will be brave and attack that spear line there. I know it's crazy, but I have the cavalry charge, you know, or mounted charge happening here. So, I think I need to have start with that one because these guys will probably get away and attack at some other point uh, because they will for sure kill these guys, I'm sure of that. So let's start with these guys who charge head forth into that heavy line there with four dice, three from the beginning and one for the mounted charge card. And I'm an adjacent to the leader, so you know, a good roll can actually eliminate those guys. And I would be happy to roll two flags as, as well, because then we force them to retreat. They can ignore one, you know, they are supported. Let's see what happens. Well, a disastrous roll. Not a single hit, two greens and two blue, and that's a red. So, well, it's not the exaggeration to say that that sucks. 
really hard because now those guys will battle back and they are adjacent to a leader they got in four hits so he these poor medium heavy cavalry they rolled right into that spear line and got impaled there to the last man oh man that was really hard that was really hard the Catechinians get their second banner by that but I'm sure the Romans will get their second banner too. Well, that sucked really, really, really much. Anyway, these guys will now attack the Slingers. Four dice. I need two hits. Thanks to Nero, we got them. Off, off we go with those guys. And then we get the second banner for the Romans as well. As well. So we have two to two knights and even a fight. I can gain ground. I can move one more and attack again. I think I want to get away from those heavy, so I'm gonna actually ride just through the line. I don't want to attack these guys today because they just evade, you know. So I'm gonna be brave and attack that medium heavies there. So it's four dice and leaders hit, and that's a good hit. That's four die, uh, three hits. Sorry, three hits, three hits, and one flag, but. These guys are supported, so you're gonna stand the ground and battle back with four. You got one hit, so one cavalry block down, and we're also gonna check Nero's fate. He's good, he's in the saddle, or at least on the horse. Uh, that's it, I believe. Uh, that was the mounted charge. Well, some good and some bad news. Uh, Actually, that was bad. I was hoping to harm them at least, you know. I, I knew I could could get killed there, but I was hoping to get, you know, two or three blocks from that unit, to be honest. That didn't happen, but anyway, Nero's charge did make up a bit for it, elim eliminating those guys and get a full hit on these guys who were not prepared for the cavalry charge, that was for sure. So those Ligurians paid a, a good price for standing the ground there. So we're going to replace the called slot E card and then we go over to the Carthaginians again. And that's a C, D or E. Let's see what we have. A line command, cool. Another line command or the dark in the sky, but the dark in the sky don't have any targets right now. So it needs to be a line command. So I will play the line command from slot E. And well, that's a good bunch of infantry to be ordered right now. Um, movement phase. The question is, do we want to move against the Romans? I'm not super sure of that. On the other hand, it's not too good to be that close to the baseline, you know, retreat-wise. So uh, maybe we should take a step forward anyway. I'm gonna do that. And I'm gonna leave a gap for the Numidians to ride out from here. These guys will not battle. These guys will not battle. These guys could. These guys will stay and, well, this sucks a bit, but I need to stay stay here as well. Uh, so these guys will attack. I uh, will evade with the Romans. But I'm gonna roll this four and hoping for some blue. No, nothing. This cavalry got away. One, two. And then we have the slingers and they will follow up the retreat here with throwing some stones after these guys. It's two dice against uh, the Romans. That's a hit and a flag. Let's see. First a hit. We're gonna remember the flag and then we're gonna roll for Nero. He's fine. So I can take the flag or not, but I think I will take it because this is a dangerous situation to be. I think the cavalry has done their job now. So I'm gonna take the flag. One, two, three. Bringing Nero down here. So he has moved in the big Semi-circle down over here. 
Okay, here we go. Uh, replace that card, and then it's the Romans. So now they will, I think they want to do the, I mean, if we could get the double time, well, maybe not yet. We want to do the line command first, I believe. Let's see what we get. That's a C or lowest order count. So let's see what they have in C. Come on, here we go. Heavy troops. Well, that's the triarii or lowest order count. Let's see what that is. That would be one unit. Perhaps it's that one then. Because that's more, that's more, and that's more. So it's this one, inspired right leadership. So I'm going to play that and I'm going to issue an order to one unit of my choice. And I think I'm going to actually order Nero. I want him in the battlefield. So I'm going to go one, two. Let's place him here. He takes control of that Prinky base unit there. That's a good one to bring forth. Okay. For the next turn. You're going to replace slot A card and then we go over to the Cataginians again. A or B. That's a Spartacus card and... Hmm, a mounted charge on the Punic side now. Okay. Well, we don't have that many cavalry who could charge unless we use the light cavalry only for that. They could reach, both of them could reach some medium heavy infantry here, but that is not really an option. Of course, we could use the card basically to move the cavalry into a better position. Because if I play a card, well, maybe that's not the. Maybe that's. It could be something, the Spartacus card. Anyway, let's do it. I'm going to play the Spartacus. Uh, so I'm going to roll four dice. Each unit symbol rolled is of that type. Leader is a unit or leader. And any section and anybody ordered will roll, uh, roll one additional die in combat. So we want leader symbols and we want um, the, you know, the colored symbols. Uh, so, flags and swords are dummies. Two flags. I'm gonna double check that. Yeah. So these guys are dummies. So we got one blue and one green. And... I will make use of that. So I'm gonna move forward with one of the infantry here. And the other guy will be the slingers who will do one efficient attack there hopefully so i'm gonna actually march forward here these guys stays and then i'll attack here these guys will evade of course but i will get five dice and any green will hit them oh we got two good roll so those um sorry got the blocks mixed up a bit so those guys will then evade, but we catched a few of them. And then comes the slinger attack, that's three dice against that Velite unit there. And that's two hits too. Man, these are good rolls now. So the Roman Velites are in a bad shape here. Well, we have one in, in full strength still. Okay, that was it actually. No. Uh, no um, victory banners dealt though, but we are in an even position one to one. We're gonna replace the card in slot B, by the way. And I think I'll stop the game at this point. This is a good point to stop it because I need to reshuffle the deck as, as well because I played the Spartacus card. So I'm gonna do that until next time. And now we will see some heavy action. We know the Romans had a double time, so they can, you know, get in and hit these guys pretty soon, but still I might want to bring up the more troops first. Would also be nice to have the heavies to match against uh, the Kajinian heavies there. Uh, and the Kajinians probably need to get forth, forward their elephants at some point so they can 
also be involved in the in the well the big big clash that will happen but anyway i think as i said this is enough for one session so uh let's see what happens next time big thanks for watching and hope to see you in part two of the battle of metaurus bye bye